NBA news and rumors mailbag coming at you here on Chat Sports. I am Chase Senior. This allows you to get involved, hop on board, join the show, and I answer your questions about the NBA offseason, the NBA playoffs. Be sure to give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore Senior because if I don't answer your questions here on the show, hit me with a DM and we can exchange and talk some ball. This question from Kobe James. What player would you trade Kyle Kuzma for? Is it possible to include Kyle Kuzma in a deal for C.J. McCollum? Now, Kyle Kuzma straight up for C.J. McCollum isn't going to get it done. But if the Lakers can get back C.J. and get off of Kyle Kuzma, who's making like $13 million, and yes, C.J. McCollum's contract, worth much more than that, I think that would be a pretty solid haul. To make salaries match, you might have to get rid of Kyle Kuzma as well as Contavious Caldwell-Pope and do some more salary cap maneuvering. But for the Lakers and from their standpoint, I think C.J. McCollum back in a deal would be great. He'd fit alongside LeBron and AD very, very well. So I'd try to include Kyle Kuzma in a package for C.J. if C.J. is available on the market. One of the big problems with Kyle Kuzma over the next few seasons, he is due to make $13 million per year. The Los Angeles Lakers currently, negative $9 million in cap space. They need to free up money somehow. I think they should trade Kuzma in order to do that. Is he worth that $13 million per year price tag? Let me know what you're thinking. Get into the comments. Get your votes in down below. Type Y for yes or type N for no. Juan's Toy Show. Should Coach Frank Vogel be fired or no? The overreaction here is somewhat funny. Frank Vogel just won an NBA championship a year ago. Like, the Lakers are a year removed from winning an NBA championship. Now, I understand that the Lakers had a lot of, have a lot of roster questions right now. They don't have coach questions. What Frank Vogel did in the playoffs last year in the NBA bubble, I thought it was really, really smart. At times, I thought he was brilliant. The way that he drew up after timeout sets late game sets and made some lineup adjustments as well as in-game adjustments. And this year, the Lakers were ravaged, crushed by injuries. LeBron and AD were out for months at a time. So I'm not putting that on Coach Frank Vogel. I don't think you should be fired. Let's get to this question from Gary Sanderson. What team could be a surprise lottery jump? Golden State Warriors. Golden State Warriors could have two lottery picks this year. Now, they're already slated because they missed out on the NBA playoffs to pick 14th. But if the Minnesota Timberwolves pick is not in the top three, it conveys to the Warriors, and the Warriors get that pick. So if that's what you mean by that question, Gary Sanderson, I do think the Warriors could have potentially two lottery picks, which puts that, in a fr puts that franchise excuse me, in a wonderful position moving forward. Juan's Toy Show, another question from him. Should Los Angeles get Bradley Beal or Russell Westbrook? I'm all out on Russell Westbrook. I think he's one of the most exciting athletes that we've ever seen in the history of the NBA. I think he's also one of the least clutch players in the history of the NBA and one of the most inefficient. He's way too reckless, never knows when to slow it down, especially late in, the, late in games and in the playoffs. He's like 20, he's like 7 and 24, or 8 and 24. Um, you know, in the last several seasons in the playoffs since KD left, it's just not good enough. Now, if you want to trade Anthony Davis away for Bradley Beal, that's maybe a deal that the Wizards would entertain. And LeBron James loves Bradley Beal. His camp has said as much. So it would take a deal like that. But Russell Westbrook, no chance. You don't win with him in the playoffs. Baby Skyhook, should LeBron have his jersey retired with the Lakers? So he's changing his jersey number from 23 to 6 to help promote Space Jam, which comes out in a couple weeks this summer. And can I say that Space Jam, when it was released in the late 90s with Michael Jordan, one of the best sports movies of all time, I don't think that's a hot take. That was one of the movies that got me obsessed with sports. So LeBron changing his jersey number from 23 to 6 to promote Space Jam, is he going to have both numbers retired? I don't know. Look, for me... You get your jersey retired when you're with a franchise for a long time and win multiple championships. LeBron has one with the Lakers right now. If he wins like three, I would say so. Let's move on to this question from 4Hype or 3Channel Friend. Who is the most underrated player in NBA history? Most underrated player in NBA history. Um, most underrated player in NBA history. Let's go recent NBA history. I think like 
I, I personally believe that Kyle Lowry recently has become criminally underrated. I also think prior to like, I don't know, maybe two seasons ago, like Damian Lillard outside of the Pacific Northwest was criminally underrated as well. Kawhi Leonard is what producer Perry is saying. He's not given the respect that he deserves in terms of being like a generational player and a cold-blooded killer. I think he's the closest thing since Kobe that we've had to Michael Jordan in terms of a guy who can just take over games late and hit a variety of shots with varying levels of difficulty. So those are the, some of the players that I'd say in recent modern-day NBA history are definitely underrated.